So we'll wait for one or uh, two minutes for people to join. So if you have any questions in between, you can ask me. Sir, could you please show me how to create a user and how to create a database in a Windows Server? Uh, I mean, see, in Windows Server, uh, the, co the commands will be the same. Okay, I'll tell you. Don't worry. So, you have the Windows box, you installed the V2? Yes, sir, I have installed. Okay. Uh, do one thing. I'll give you the control so that you can do it. I'll make you yeah. presenter. No, sir, it was in other system. Okay, okay. See, uh, you need to run the same commands. I'll give you the commands. Okay. Yeah, actually See? I noted the commands one, but when mm -hmm. I try to uh, create a user, it is showing uh, full authentication is not accessed, something like it is showing. Remaining all commands are working that. So do you know what is the error you are getting? So have you taken a snapshot something? Uh, I do one thing, just to send me through mail, I'll look into it basically. See, normally, I'll give you, tell you the steps at very high level. So, you cre okay. created the user first, right, on Windows? Windows, uh, while installing, I'm created, sir. But once I'm logging into the database server, yes. I'm not able to create it. No, no, first thing is, did you uh, install the DB2 software? Yes, sir. Okay, so while installing, it will ask you for a user, right? So did you create the user before? While installing, okay. Sir. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the steps. Okay, do it again. I'll give you the steps to do it. Okay. Okay. Just give me one second. Class is there? Okay. So if you want to do it on Windows, the first thing which you need to do is first create OS level user. I think you might have missed this, right? Okay. So first don't install it directly, first try to create a user basically, okay, on Windows. Mm, yes, sir. So if you, you, you know how to create a user, right? Go to control panel. Sales call Miguel create chelo. Okay. So preferably try to create uh, Windows is just not gabote, Viru. So try to create the user with name as uh, DB2 admin. Password code the button. And you make simplicity easy on to the name. And the mandate ring. A user and a button, a password and a button. Then the other one is installation chain. Second step is installation chain. Installation is a structure circuit basically. Kun questions are the Majulo the Kirby username password to the Adigan the memory username password. Adigan up to either one basically. A username creatures or a password creatures. When I see me step or chase on roof, that installation chases on the game. You ever watch on to the yes, sir. Installation chase a proof of a user adding, sir. I use the name Munde create challenge chip to none. Pro username which term could be Alaka Kunda. You first a user create chassis, then you start start chain. Okay? Okay, sir. And then you simply uninstall chain, first you install this, then you start the process follow on. Okay, sir. Sir, next time you user create chain, you user name, you instance. You instance create chain, you have control panel, you have user create chain. Okay. Then you have ease to run chain. I see how to check it. I have to use it. Same with it. I mean, the same with Windows. Oh, okay. 
అంటే మీరు ఆల్్రెడీ మీ ఇన్స్టాలేషన్ సక్సెస్ఫుల్ అయిపోయిందా మీది ఆ ఇన్స్టాలేషన్ సక్సెస్ఫుల్ అయింది ఆ అయిపోతే మీరు ఒక యూజర్ క్రియేట్ చేయండి ఈ డిబి టు ఐసిఐటి రన్ చేయండి దోస్తా సర్ నేను ఐన రన్ అవ్వలే సర్ సో ఏ మినిట్స్ అన్న సిస్టం ఓపెన్ చేస్తాను ఓ పంచి నాకు ఒక మెయిల్ పెట్టండి నేను నా మొబైల్ లో చూస్తుంటాను మీ ఎర్రర్ ఈ రేపు క్లాస్ స్టార్ట్ చేస్తాను నేను మీకు స్నాప్ షాట్ తీయడం వచ్చే చెప్పాను కదా మీకు జస్ట్ గో టు సెటింగ్ టు అక్కడికి వెళ్ళి ఆ స్నాప్ షాట్ తీసి నాకు మెయిల్ పెట్టండి ఆ మెయిల్ ఐడి ఉంది కదా దగ్గర పంపించండి ఓకే నేను చూస్తాను ఆ ఓకే ఐ నో ఐ మీన్ డోంట్ రైట్ ఆన్ మోస్ట్లీ విండోస్ లైనక్స్ లో ట్రై చేసుకోండి మీరు నేర్చుకోండి మంచిది ఇట్స్ గుడ్ ఫర్ యు లాంగ్ టర్మ్ యూస్ ఓకే ఐ నో చేంజ్ ఐ యామ్ నాట్ ట్రైయింగ్ టు డినై ఫ్రమ్ డూయింగ్ ఇట్ ఆన్ విండోస్ బట్ ప్రాక్టీస్ ఇట్ ఆన్ లైనక్స్ బికాజ్ అదే పొద్దున కంపెనీకి వెళ్ళిన తర్వాత మీకు ఒక 50 60 టు 70% లైనక్స్ లో ఉంటాయి మీకు సర్వర్స్ 30% అలా విండోస్ లో ఉంటాయి మీకు సో రెండు నేర్చుకుంటే మీకు మంచిది బేసికల్లీ ఆ రెండు నేర్చుకుంటానా సార్ బట్ విండోస్ లో నాలెడ్జ్ ఉంటే కొంచెం బెటర్ అని చెప్పేసి ఇది ఒకసారి చూస్తున్నా షూర్ షూర్ యా ఓకే నో ప్రాబ్లం యా టేబుల్స్ so we are just trying to tell you there are uh, basically two types of table spaces one is uh, sms another is so this is what we are seeing yesterday so table space is nothing but it's an objects in a database basically so uh, if you want to create a table space what, so what is the need for creation of a table space as i told yesterday any tables which you try to create the table has to be stored in a table space and the table space will always points to the hard disk okay so we i we have seen yesterday like when you uh, when i'm saying that the your uh, table space is pointing to hard disk so your data can be stored in the files your data can be stored in directories okay so if you want to store your data in uh, directories we call it as sms which is nothing but system as a table space if you want to store your data in files we call it as dms which is database management system so we have seen yesterday like what how many types of table spaces are there basically there are two types of table spaces one is sms table space which stores in directories and there is dms table space which stores in uh, files basically okay so we have also seen the syntaxes how to create the table space basically so this is a simple syntax to create sms and dms and in sms as i told you you need to specify the directory location in such format in dms you need to specify the file the keyword the location where you want to store it the size and i told you the size can be in terms of kilobytes megabytes or gigabytes basically okay and we have seen some examples like how to create them other things basically okay in linux i showed you like how to create the table spaces and other things basically okay and we have also seen like how to look at the existing table spaces let's say you joined a new project and you want to find out how many table spaces are there so we have seen yesterday that the command is list table spaces which will tell you how many table spaces are there basically okay and we have also seen like to increase the table space size how to decrease the size and how to uh, resize the existing table spaces basically okay and yesterday someone was asking me like how to look at the size of the table spaces so today we'll see like how to look at the size of the table space how to insert the data and how can i find out like uh, whether i can uh, uh, what is the current usage of the table spaces kind of thing basically okay so we'll get started so before that any questions before we get started okay so the same thing what we have seen yesterday today we'll see do, do some lab exercises kind of thing basically okay so the same flow chart what we have discussed yesterday so your table always stores data on a table space and your table space points to either directories or it points to files basically okay so let's say i will take an example let's say i have a table space by name tss1 or something which i have created with 20 megabytes basically okay i am keeping it simple okay and let's say i am creating a table by name some dummy table okay e test something okay so what happens i am creating this table okay and when i'm creating this table uh, this table is storing data on this table space and this table space i created with 20m okay so now we know the syntax how to create table spaces which i have seen yesterday okay i also told you how to put the table on a table space so when you are creating a table at the last 
you you need to uh, what to say at the last you need to specify the table space name basically okay so let me show you an example how to check the table space tiers and everything okay so before creation of the table spaces first try to connect to the database so i told you yesterday also uh, a table space is an object that's the reason you connect to the database first basically okay you can see my connection is uh, done first i will try to create the table space you know the syntax as we have seen the uh, syntaxes so let's say this is dms table space so let's say this is dms table space we will create this table space basically okay. so make a note of the syntax if you want to know how it create table space ds as well so let me give you the full path for now some table space name from dm okay so you can see here my table space is got created which is by name tss1 and it is storing data on some file this is a file where it is storing the data and the size of file is 20m okay here as i told you yesterday also my sizes are very less because this is lab environment but in companies the sizes will be in terms of gigabytes basically okay so let me the second thing is i want to create a table on the top of this table space so can i create a table which stores data on this table space yes so how to create it i'm giving a dummy example so you can see here i have created the table also basically the table as a specified name of the table is e test and this table is storing data on this uh what do you say this table space and this table space is pointing to this location so the size of this is pointing to this location and the size of this table space is 20 megabytes basically okay so what really happens is when you try to insert the data to e test as i told you the e test goes to table space and the table space goes to the file so this file is a place where it gets the data okay So the question is, what is the maximum amount of data which you can put into this file? So obviously, you can put the maximum amount of 20 megabytes to this file, basically. Okay. So let's do some inserts. Okay. Clear. So if you, I'll save these things so that I'll send you the commands and other things also. So if you want to refer to it after some time, you can refer to this. Okay. Now let me do some insert. So insert into I want to insert to table. values so you can see here my table has three columns i first column j second column k third column okay so you let me insert some dummy rows so you can see that i inserted the row so which means that the this record gets inserted to this table space so this table space is pointing to this location so your data will be stored in this location basically okay so can i do one more insert yes so if you keep on doing inserts your uh, table space will size will keeps on increasing so let me do some amount of records okay so i want to just check how many records i inserted so how to check it i am just doing a select on the table so you can see 30 are inserted let's make it as 20 to keep it simple okay so you can see that your table has 20 records basically okay now i want to increase uh, the data fastly okay i want to increase the data exponentially because if i do one insert at a time it will take so much of time so i'll run a different query so just try to look at the query what you are trying you are trying to say insert into this table name select star from the same table name okay you can see from here that the table has how many records the table has 20 records So you are trying to insert 20 records to the table, so the table already has 20. So again, you are again inserting 20 records. So 20 plus 20, 40. Your table will have 40 records. If you want to check it up, you can see that the table has 40 records. Okay. If I run the same command again, so your table has 40. So the 40 records will be inserted again. So 40 plus 40 it becomes 80. So if you want to check, you can check again. Okay. So the only reason why I am running these commands are I want to increase or I want to increase huge amount of data. If I do single inserts at a time, it will take so much of time. But can I do it in exponential format, which inserts huge amount of data in a single time? Yes. 
So if I keep on running this command, what happens? Your data will be increasing basically. Okay. So some at some point, I want to check how many records are there. You can see here my table is having 640 records. Okay. But now I want to see the size of the table space. As someone was asking me yesterday, can I see the size of my table space? Yes, you can see the size of the table space. Okay. So how to look at the size of the table space? The command is list table space it's a show detail. So you need to run this command and remember this command will show you output in terms of pages. Okay. So I told you what are the different types of pages. We have standard pages 4K, 8K and uh, 16K and 32K. So this will show you output in terms of pages. I will see the output. I'll try to explain you what are the pages and how it shows basically. Okay. But if you want to look at the size of the table space, this is the command basically. Okay. So till now, if you want to make a note of the commands, make a note of the commands. I did simple things basically. I created a table space. If you want to quickly make a note of, write this command. And the, I created a table, I did some inserts. Okay, the funny insert which I did was insert into select star form, which has in, which which has uh, uh, what what to say it has inserted the data exponentially. Why I did that because I just want to insert the data very fastly to my table space basically. So that's why I did insert into select star basically. Okay. Any questions to this point before we move forward? Clear, right? Okay. So what I'll do? Let's run the command called list table space show detail. Okay, so I'm running the command. You can see here, it is showing you a lot of different output. Okay, so let's view the output for the table space which I created. So this is the output for the table space which I created. So what is my table space name? My table space name is TS1. What was the ID which was given? Given. So the ID which was given was nine. So we have seen these things yesterday. What kind of table space is this? This is a database managed table space which we call it as DMS table space. This is not required. Okay, contents is not required. This is important which is what is the state of the table space. We have seen yesterday like what are the states of the table space. Your table space should always be in normal state. If it is in any state apart from normal, either if it is an offline state or inaccessible state, your table space won't be in a good, good state basically. Okay. So here our table space is good which is in normal state basically. Okay. Below that you can see lot of things. So these things are important. So just try to understand these things. Okay. I'll put it in the chart. So you can go through it or you can see it here only basically. So it is showing some details like the first is total pages. The, just go through it. I'll explain you each and everything. Okay. But try to understand what is total pages, what is usable pages and other things. Okay, so if you look at here, I'll give you some statistics so that you can do the own computation. Okay, so what we did, we created a table space TSS1. What is the size of this table space? 20M basically. The size of table space is 20M. So here you can see the first thing is total pages. So how much is the total pages which is there? 2560. And you can see one more tag here which is called page size. So what is the default page size which it is taking? It is taking the page size as 8K. I told you right, there are different types of page sizes. Here the page size which is taking as 8, 8 into 1024 which is nothing but 8K. Okay. So let's see how they computed total pages. Total pages is equal to size of your table space. divided by page size basically. So this is the formula which people use to compute the total pages basically. So what is the size of your table space? My size of table space is 20 megabytes. What is my page size? In this example, my page size is 8K. So this is the thing. So if you do a simple math basically, so 20 megabyte is nothing but 20 into 1024 kilobyte divided by 8k. So do the multiplications. This k and this k will go away. Kilobytes and kilobytes will go away. If you do the math for the rest of the thing, let me open the calc and show you. This is the first time, so I will show you the calc. Next time you can do automatically computations. Okay. 20 into 
1024 divided by 8. So the K and K will go away. You can see that this is the pages, which is equivalent to 2560 pages. Okay. So for any table space, if you are creating, let's say I have created a table space with 100 GB. And let's say my page size is 8K. So what is the total number of pages? Is the number size of the table space with this 100 GB by page size, which is 8K. So if you do the simple math, you will get the total number of pages basically. Okay. So just quickly make a note of it here. You can see in my example, basically here you can see in your example your table space. Where is it? Where is it? Here you can see in this example your page total pages you got it as two five six zero, but you should know how you got the two five six zero. Okay, so this is the formula through which they compute it. Okay, so make a quick note of it. I'll give you one minute, then we'll move further. Okay, so you can see your table space, total pages is equivalent to the 2560. Okay, now look at some of the other statistics here. Basically, the second is usable pages. So remember, so DB2 is saying that okay, I can, the total number of pages which are allocated for this table space is 2560. So only 25228 uh, two, pages only. Okay, so there are some pages which cannot be used for storing the data, or there are some pages which cannot be used for storing the DB2 data, basically. Okay, so so make a quick note of it also. So remember, your total pages should be equal to usable pages plus DB2 header pages, which is equal to 32K. So remember. When you are creating a table space, you are telling that the DB2 data can be kept in, uh, sorry, DB2 data can be kept into these pages. So when I create a table space, my name TSS1 with size 20M, I'm specifying the total number of pages which we got is 2560 pages, we got it basically. Okay. But remember, out of these 2560 pages, DB2 cannot write data to all the 2560 pages. DB2 needs some space for writing header information. So header information is nothing but it's for purely DB2 purpose. So DB2 writes some additional information which it, for which it needs space. So what is the minimum number of pages which it requires is 32 pages. Okay. So for any table space which you create, so for any total number of pages which you got, remember you cannot write the DB2 end user data or the client data to all the total pages. You can write it to only the only the pages excluding the 32 pages. So the question is why I have to exclude 32 pages because 32 pages are the minimum pages which DB2 requires for writing header information, and it is purely for DB2 purpose, not for the end user purpose. Okay, so that's why you can see here there is a different tag which is called usable pages. So your usable pages are nothing but total pages minus 32 pages. So if you do a simple math, 2560 minus 32 is equal to 2528 basically. Okay. So these are the number of pages where DB2 can write the data or DB2 can write the end user data. When I say end user data, the client data. So you people are clients, you are trying to create a table and insert data. So what will be the data which you are trying to write? So DB2 will only write to these number of pages basically. Okay. So if you want to make a note of it, just make a note of it basically. So just make a quick note of it.
clear? Okay. So you can see that after this there are few more things. You can see there is one more thing called user pages. You can see the user pages means user pages are nothing but user pages are the pages where DB2 has actually written the data basically. Okay. So I did few inserts. So DB2 has already inserted the data to few of the pages. So 192 of the pages which are already filled basically. Okay. So you can see the next thing which is free pages which means that how many pages are still free and how many pages still DB2 can insert the data. So you can see here this the number of pages where you can db2 can still insert the data basically okay so they try to understand these four things these four th will specify the size of a table space basically okay so if you want to be much more clear i'll tell you in a different example i can do something pictorial so what what i am trying to say here in this example is let's say i created a table space okay so this is my table space by name basically i can put the name here so the name of this table space is TSS1 basically. Okay. And when I'm trying to insert data, so DB2 has to put the number of pages. So let's say so this is one page, this is another page. So in this table space we'll have a lot of pages. So I won't be drawing all the pages. So let's say these are the number of pages. So how many total pages are there? So the total number of pages is 2560 which you can see here. So the total number of pages which are present is 2560. So how we go to the figure of 2560? As I told you, the size of a table space divided by the page size. So here the page size is 8K. So do a simple math, you will get this. Okay. Out of all these pages, what I am trying to tell you is, uh, you cannot write data to all the two, f uh, you cannot write data from all the pages from 0 to 2560. There should be some pages which should be left for DB2. Let's say these are the pages. Let's say these are 32 pages, just an example. So these are very much less. Okay. So your DB2 cannot write data to these pages. These pages are reserved basically and they are reserved for writing DB2 header information. When I say header information, it is purely for DB2 internal purpose. Okay. Excluding these two pages, what are the remaining pages which are present, which is 2528, DB2 end user or the DB2 client can insert the data. So if I do an insert onto the table, it starts writing from this page. Okay, It keeps on writing it. Once this page got filled up, it will it goes to the next page. If this is also filled up, it goes to the next page. If this is also filled up, it goes to the next page. So it follows the sequential order. So the last page number is 2560 basically. Okay. Okay, so I, if you see, if you remember the previous thing, I did few inserts. So how many pages are currently filled up? It says 192 pages are currently filled up because I inserted some amount of data. So let's assume that this is 192 pages. So till this point, you have data. The rest of the things are still free. How many pages are free? We have two. 336 are still free basically. Okay, clear. So draw this diagram if you want to draw it quickly. Okay, so. Can I increase the user pages? Yes. Can I decrease the free pages? Yes. If you keep on inserting data to the table, so if you keep on inserting data, uh, one after this page, the next page will be used, or the next page will be used. Okay. So if you keep on inserting data to the table space, the number of free pages will have, so sorry, the number of user pages will increase because we are writing the data and the number of free pages will decrease. Okay. If you keep on in, uh, doing it, at one point what will happen, the user pages will keep on increasing and the free pages keep on decreasing uh, at, a, at a situation where your free pages will become zero. So if your free pages become is becoming zero, which means that you don't have any free space, which means that your inserts will fail basically. Okay. So I'll do this exercise. So first make a note of these diagrams before, before I start doing the exercise basically. Okay. I'll give you one minute, just make a quick note of the things.
Okay, so we'll do the same exercise. Now what I'll do, I'll keep on inserting the data. Okay, so you can see, remember the user pages. The user pages is 192 pages and the free pages is this one. So if you keep on inserting the data, your user pages will keep on increasing. Okay, so let's do the exercise. We did a few inserts, so I'm doing it again. So the 192 increases and 2336 free pages decreases. Okay, so I'm trying to do a few inserts which will increase the data. Now if you want to check it, you can see here. You can see that your user pages has increased and your free pages has decreased. Okay. So as you keep on increasing the data to the table space, or oh sorry, uh, as you keep on inserting data to the table, which indirectly puts the data on a table space, your user pages will keep on increasing and free pages keep on decreasing. Okay. So what will happen if I keep on inserting the data? Okay. So if you keep on inserting the data, your table space will be 100% filled, which means that your free pages will become zero, which means that you cannot insert data to my table space. Okay. So can we create this situation? Yes, we can create this situation. So this is one common issue which you will definitely do in companies. A lot of people come to you saying that my table space is 100% filled, what to do? Before that, you should understand like why the table space is 100% filled. Okay, so remember, each day, every table space has a certain space associated with it. So if you are nearing to 100%, or if it has already reached the 100%, which means that the end user or the end client has already inserted the data, which has filled up all the pages which are present in the table space, then you cannot further insert the data. The only way to further insert the data to the table space is by adding a new space. We have seen the syntax yesterday by running an alter table space command using extend option or using a resize option basically. Okay, so I keep on inserting the data, so you can see it takes some time. You can see at some point it will fail with reason saying that my table space is 100% full. Or so if you want to check now, you can still check how much space is free and how much is user. You can see now your user page is 1728 and free pages is 800. I'll do further inserts. So it will fail at some point, basically. You can see here, you got an error, basically. Here you can see this is the error which you got. So if you just read this message, it says that it is unable to allocate the new pages in the table space, TSS1. Okay, so no free space was there in the table space due to which it was unable to uh, run in do the insert. So if you want to check the table space size, this is a see you can see the user pages got two five two eight, which is equivalent to usable pages, and your free pages got to zero, which means that there is no free space basically. Okay, so at this time, if any client or any user if is trying to still insert the data, if n number of people are still trying to insert, all the queries will fail with the same reason saying that no space is there or it is unable to allocate the new pages in the table space basically. Okay, So in companies what happens, people will not wait for the table space to be 100% filled basically. They will proactively monitor the table spaces. They will see if your table space is 80% filled, they keep on increasing. 90% filled, they send an alert to the database people basically. If it is 95% people, they send an red alert to the uh, database people. Okay, So people proactively increase the table space size if it is nearing to 80% or 85% or 90% basically. Okay. You can see here in my example, when I'm trying to run an insert statement, the insert statement failed. It's with reason code saying that uh, uh, it is unable to allocate the new space which is present in the table space basically. Okay. I'm just showing you the values again just for your clarity. So you can see here my free page is called near to zero basically. Okay. Any questions to this point? Clear? What what is the exercise which we really did here basically? Okay. So what should I do now basically? So we have seen the commands yesterday. If your table space is hundred percent filled, then you need to uh, increase the size. We have seen the commands yesterday. The command is alter table space. So I will run the command which we have seen yesterday. Alter table space, your table space name. I am doing an extend. All. So let me add some 30M space. So the, see here, if you add some additional space, so try to guess what all things will increase. Will your total pages increase? Will your usable increase? Will your user pages increase? Or will your free pages increase? Okay. So remember when you try to add a new space, definitely your total pages will increase because you are adding a more space. Your usable pages will also increase. 
Okay, but remember your user pages won't increase because user pages are the pages which are filled with data. You are just trying to add additional space which are not filled with data. So your user pages won't increase and your free pages will increase because you are adding a new additional pages. Okay, so if I run this command and uh, show you this output, you can see this value will increase, this value will increase, this value won't increase basically and the free pages will increase basically. Okay, so let's run the command. You can see that my alter table space command was successful. You can see that my total pages got increased, my usable pages got increased, my user page has not increased, my free page has increased basically. Okay. Clear? So if you still run the insert statement now, the insert statement might be successful now. So this insert was failing before, so let's see whether it's successful or failing now. So we are inserting huge amount of data, so the queries will take a bit of time. So let's be patient. Okay, we got a different error basically. Okay, that's fine basically. So this next important thing is, see, well, I'll tell you one more thing. In DB2, if you're running any command, if you're getting any error, there's a pattern in which you'll get an error. So this is the error which we got. So if you read the message, you can clearly understand it says your file system is full. But remember, DB2 errors are classified into few uh, in a single pattern. I'll tell you how to look into the DB2 errors. So in DB2, if you're getting any errors, it follows. So the error message you'll get in this format. You will get in a SQL code. You will get the error description at the last you will get uh, SQL state or you will get reason code sometimes you will get this sometimes you get this but that's okay so this is a format so this is a format in which you get the error messages basically in db2 any error message in db2 you will get in this format only I'll show you some examples here let's say this is example So you can see here this is the example. You can see this is a SQL code which you got and this is the error description. So this is the error description which I got and the last SQL state will be there. Okay. The SQL code is important. Basically if you look at the SQL code this is important. Okay. So the reason why I'm telling the SQL code is important is there is a command through which you can run it and see like what is the error how to prevent the error. You need not if you are getting any error you need not immediately jump to Google and search for the errors basically. Simply run this command. This command will tell you why the error is happening, what are the possible reasons why the error is happening, and it will also try to suggest you or it will try to advise you what you have to do in order to prevent that error, basically. So this is a very good thing in DB2. Okay. So how to run the command? The command is you have to run is DB2, question mark. You have to run this command, basically. So the command is DB2, put it in quotes, question mark, followed with the SQL code which you got, basically. Okay. So if you run this command, it will show you two things basically, it will show you explanation which will explain you why the error is happening and it will also show you user response which will show you, which will tell you how to prevent the error. So these are the two things which uh, you can easily find it out uh, when you run these commands basically. So just make a quick note of it.
So clear? Okay. So we'll see for this error. We will just run the example and show you. So you can see I'm running DB2 question mark. What is the SQL code which I got here in this example? This is the SQL code which I got. You can see from the description. See this is the initial class, so we'll get new. Okay. It is showing an exam explanation. It will trying to show you the way the error is happening. You can see here the user response where it will tell you what exactly you have to do in order to prevent this error. Okay. So the same thing what I was trying to explain you here basically. So any SQL code is in case in the future if you are getting any errors, you can take me a snapshot and send me through mail or you can simply remember the SQL code and tell me what is the command which you are running. Okay. So if I if you give me the SQL code, I can simply run this command. I can see explanation why you got this error. It will be mentioned here, and I'll also see the user response how to prevent it. Okay, so rather than coming to me, you can also uh, run the same thing, and you can easily find it out basically. Okay, so here in my case, my file system is filled up. So what I'll do, I'll simply drop the table, which will uh, make some space to me. Basically, I'm running out of space basically. Okay, I'm getting get hundred percent full. Okay. Uh, basically for me clear why okay so and remember uh, for people who are beginning to db2 they or the people who are learning db2 they will get this error sql 104 and if you are getting this error which means that your syntax error okay so if you are running some command and if you are getting sql 104 and error which means that is a syntax error so just look at the syntax again and try to read Recorrect it again, basically. Okay. For people who are learning DB2 newly, there will lot of the people they help this error. So I'll just show you an example. What is 104 so that you can get clarity in future also you will get the same errors. So let's run some command and I'll show you the output. So I'm creating a table space. So let's say I'm doing some type of error. You can see here I did some spelling mistakes intentionally. So if you write a spelling mistake, see the error which you are getting basically. You are getting 104. As I told you, 104 and if you are getting, which means that it's a syntax error basically. Okay. So try to look into the SQL codes also because in companies a lot of people uh, they want they want to debug the errors. They look at the SQL codes. Whether so you can also practice it by looking at the SQL codes. Clear? Any questions about what is SQL code, how to look at the SQL code kind of thing? Okay, we'll move further. Okay, so if we will uh, go to the next thing, okay, which is okay. So the next thing we will try to understand some terminologies. Okay, so uh, till now what I'm seeing we are creating a table space. So let's say this table space is pointing to some location, some location. Like let's say uh, slash chum on Linux slash db2 sapt emp dot dot. So this is a location. Okay, so these locations technically we call them as containers. Basically, and this is just a terminology which db2 will follow. Okay. In Oracle, they call it as a data files, basically. Okay. So remember, uh, a table space will point to some physical location. These physical locations, technically, we call them as a containers, basically. So the definition stands as table space points to containers, which are locations where your data resides. 
So make a note of it. So your table space is nothing but it points to a containers where your physical data is where DB2 data resides basically. So make a note of it quickly, we'll move further. So, so the question is, as I told you, your table space is pointing to containers, basically. So, you will see, so in the real time, basically, you can either create SMS or you can create DMS. I'll tell you what is the difference between SMS and DMS. Okay, just let me complete this and I'll come to that. Okay. So, a table space points to a containers. So, this is saying container. So the question is, can my table space have multiple containers? Yes, your table space can have multiple containers, which means that instead of pointing your table space to a single container, can your table space point to multiple containers? Yes, you can do that. So let's say TS1 is pointing to this, and let's say it is also pointing to DB2 SAPT, EMP, some T or out. Okay. So can my table space, instead of pointing to single physical location, can it point to two physical locations? Yes, it can do. Okay. So this we call it as container 1, this we call it as container 2. So as I told you, your table space is nothing but a collection of uh, container. So it points to a container, so it can point to more than one container also. Okay. So in this simple example, your table space is pointing to two containers. Okay. Let's assume that this size is somewhere near to uh, 2 GB, just an example, and this is near to 2 GB example. So your table space size is equal to sum of all the containers. So in this example, this is 2 GB plus 2 GB. So your table space can maximum store till 4 GB of data basically. Okay. So the same thing applies. Table space points to containers. You can have multiple containers. Sum of all the container sizes is equal to your table space size basically. Okay. So just make a quick note of it. So just make a note of it, I will move further. space with containers we have already seen the syntax before okay so this is I think I wrote syntax okay so let's try to so if you want to see this you can see here also if you do list table space show detail you can see for each table space at the last that is one thing it says number of containers you can see here one because this table space I created with only one container basically that's why it is showing as one here if I create with two containers it will show as two the other table space which we have created you can see that the number of containers is also equal to one okay so let's try creating a table space with multiple containers and see what happens okay so how to create it the syntax is same okay. 
So let me write it again. So the syntax is same. So if you want to create a table space with multiple containers, so remember in companies all the people will create a table space with multiple containers only. So try to understand the syntax as clearly. Okay. The create is create table space your table space name something. You will write managed by database file the location where you want to write size. So if you want to define the second container, put a comma and write the whole syntax again which is file, the location to just as an example and give the size. If you want to write one more, you can write for all the things basically. File, location, three, size. So these are the ways in which you can define the table space with multiple containers. Okay. Just make a note of it. Okay, so this is the syntax. Make another one quickly. What is high watermark on the table space? I'll tell you, Shishir, about high watermark. It comes in reorg basically. Okay. But remember, the high watermark is nothing but it's a last page in the table space which is having data. Okay. So if you look at this example which we have seen before. So in this space, let's say 192 is the last space which is having data. Okay. So high watermark will be pointing over to this space. So it's a just an indicator which will tell you where the, what is the last space in your table space which is having data basically. Okay. If you still insert the data, let's say okay, my 250th uh, I have data till 250th page basically. So your high watermark will be pointing to the 250th page basically. Okay. It's this indicator which will tell you like what is the last space in the table space which will have the data basically. Okay. So it is mostly used in uh, uh, to identify the reorg to remove the free spaces. I tell you in uh, maintenance utilities when we discuss about the uh, uh, what to say the reorg stuff basically. Okay. So here we will create a table space with multiple containers. Okay. So I'll just run the small example so you can also see it. Okay. So I'm creating with small size as I told you in companies. So I'm creating one other thing which is with home David C B T E M P two dot out. Oh dear. So you can see here, okay, if my system got filled. I need to remove something. Okay, do one thing. Let me drop some old. So let me do some cleanup. Just give me one minute. T S one T S D M S D. I don't have space, that's what So I'm doing some cleanup stuff. Just one second. It will be done. I told you yesterday, right? If you want to delete some file, rm is the command. So, but be careful when you're running an rm command in Linux. I think you should be having space now. Okay, now I am 75%. Okay, this should be good. So I'll run the same command. We have to connect to the. So 
So you can see here, I'm creating a table space. What is the name of my table space? TSMUL is the name of table space. It has two containers. This is container one, and the second one is a different container. You can see the size of first container is 20 megabytes, second and size of second container is 20 megabytes. So total, your table space size is 40 M basically. Okay. So just make a quick note of it. Kiran, are you there? Kiran? I just got your email. Yes, Kiran, turn okay. Yeah, turn it. So when you're running the commands, okay, you could IBM DB2 and IBM DB2 local and day. Okay. Okay. Go to the Okay, set up tool. Okay, go to command line tools. I could set up critical and command line tools color and day. Okay. Okay. You could have administrator in a window on the Open chain mirror. If you open chain mirror, open chain mirror, open chain mirror, okay? Okay, every time you allow open this call, sir? If you open this administrator command in Windows, it has all the privileges. If you open this command, it will run out of it, basically. Okay, actually, in Windows, you can use db2 cmd and jp to open this. Yes, that used to work in old versions. In old versions, it will punch it. I don't know what they want, but it was deprecated. They removed db2 cmd. Now this is the way in which you have to open the command basically. Okay. Okay, sir. Sure. So we go check here and the Malay children just simple guy. We go we install this in the other IBM DB2 study basically. Okay. Copy local and command line tools local and you can administrate on to the open chain. Okay. You open this with commands and it runs just run nothing. Go to DB2 ICRT hyphen U username runs a level and the doctor is chairman from which not low. Okay. Okay. ओके ना आई रन चेंज भी रन नहीं पड़ती ओके ना या ओके सॉरी ओके सो दिस इज़ द सिंटैक्स हाउ टू क्रिएट द टेबल स्पेस विथ मल्टीपल कंटेनर्स बेसिकली ओके सो इफ यू वांट टू सी द डिटेल्स एस आई टोल्ड यू इफ यू वांट टू सी मच मोर डिटेल्स दिस टेबल स्पेसेस शो डिटेल यू कैन सी हियर द टेबल स्पेस व्� so there are few more important syntaxes which looks to be very simple but they are very helpful in real time okay so the next thing is assume that you joined a company where containers are created by someone else you don't know the physical locations you join a company to a new project and table spaces are created databases are created and containers are already created okay and this is the example let's say you joined some company where this is a setup and you have found that you have a table space by name tsmul which is having the two containers, okay? But you don't know where is where are, what is the uh, location where they are pointing to and what are the physical locations, okay? So is there any command which will tell me what are the two con two physical container locations? Can I get the physical container locations? Yes, we have a syntax for that also. So if you want to get the physical locations of the containers, okay? So there is a syntax for that. The syntax is. Locations. The command is libitool list. 
table space containers for table space ID. So make a note of it, I'll tell you what is the syntax. Okay. So this command will tell you where which location, which physical locations your table space is pointing to basically. Okay. So make a note of it, I'll run it and show you. Okay, so let me run it and show you. Okay. So you can see this this is my table space ID where I want to find the containers. You can see my table space ID is six. You need to understand the ID. So the command is list table space containers for ID. Here my ID is six. So I should be able to see two containers basically. So I'll let me run the command. Command is list table space containers for ID. My ID is six. So you can see that there are two physical locations which are present basically. In addition to this command, if you do show detail, it will show you the size also. So you can see that here it is showing the size also in addition to this. Okay. So till this point, it will only show you the physical containers. And if you add an option called show detail at the last, it will show you the sizes also of each container basically. Okay. So just make a note of these commands. Okay. Okay. So we'll see the next question. I think someone is asking me what is real time, which type of table spaces will people will uh, create? As I told you before, also there are two types of uh, table spaces. Basically, one is SMS and another is uh, DMS. Okay. SMS, another is uh, DMS. So if you look at the differences in SMS, we are pointing to directories as I told you a lot number of times. Whereas in DMS, we'll point to files and we'll specify the size of the file also. Okay. So let's take an example. Let's say I have C drive and I have, I have D drive and let's say I have E drive. This is my Windows configuration. Let's say Windows C drive is having uh, 50 GB. D drive is also having 50 GB and the E drive also having 50 GB, just as an example. And out of which 10 GB is filled here, 20 GB is filled here, and uh, 20 GB is used here. So this is the used size, okay? So let's say if I'm creating a DMS table space, I will take example case by case basis. So let's say I'm creating a DMS table space. So while giving the container, I'm giving a D drive. So I'm specifying D drive emp dot out so let's say I'm creating something around 15 my definition for DMS table space okay so you can see here in this definition 
you are telling that okay, you are want to put the data in a file, and the maximum size of file is 15 GB basically. Okay, so if you specify in such a fashion, so DB2 will keep on inserting the data. It won't complain anything basically. But if assume that if your 15 GB is filled out basically, if your 15 GB is filled out, then it throws an error saying that your table space is filled kind of thing basically. Okay. Okay, so you can see in this example, my D drive is total space is 50 GB, out of which 20 GB is already filled up. Okay, after this, I created this table space. So this table space has occupied 15 more GB. So that 20 plus 15, 35 GB. Okay, so can I extend this table space? Yes, you can extend this. But how much maximum you can extend? You can extend maximum to the free space which is available. So you can extend it to uh, how much? 15. Okay, but here the challenge is. If it gets filled up, I can extend it by 5 GB more, so which makes it 20 GB. If 20 GB is also filled up, I have to extend it again. So in DMS table spaces, what really happens is the database people has to manually increase the space whenever the table space are getting filled up. Okay, so you need to do table space monitoring, which is one of the critical activity. If your table space is getting filled up, you need to proactively increase the size of the table space so you need some manual intervention which means that the database people has to run some commands each and every time when it is getting filled up basically okay so remember if, if you, when you, it looks like very simple saying that uh, uh, the table space if it is getting filled up uh, you can simply run an alter table space command but the challenge is in companies you won't be supporting a single server in my ex project specifically what I support we have more than uh, 500 to 600 servers basically and each server will be having more basically Okay, it depends upon the project basically. Okay, so there are a lot of servers with a lot of table spaces, and it's very pain to monitor them basically. Okay, so one of the typical activity with the database people will do is to monitor the table spaces basically. Okay, so here, our, the point which I want to make here is your table space DMS table space has a space uh, which we can specify, and if that space is been reached, then uh, you have to increase it. So the increasing of a table space is a manual intervention or the database people has to run some commands manually which will uh, uh, which which is a cumbersome process because the database people has to keep on monitoring it basically. Okay. So the second type of table space is SMS. Okay. Here if you look at here we here we don't specify the size basically. Okay. So let's say I'm creating a e drive let's say some directory name so if you look at this example so my 50 gb is already is the size of the d drive and out of which 20 gb has been used by some other application not by db2 okay so i'm creating this table space you can see here i'm specifying to e drive so you can see here how much is a free space on e drive 50 minus 20 30 gb is been is free on e drive so remember, DB2 will use all the free space which is present on the drive. So in this example, I have 30 GB of free space, so I can use all the free space which is 30 GB. Okay. So do I need to specify the size? No, you need not specify the size. Whatever be the free space which is present on the drive, DB2 will automatically use it basically. Okay. Or in contrast, let's say uh, some other application has uh, cleaned up their data. So let's say this is only 5 GB which is what filled up. So how much? You can see 45 GB was filled. So you can see here the DB2 can use the complete 45 GB of present on the drive. So in case of SMS, whatever be the free space which is present on the drive or file system, your DB2 can automatically use it basically. But whereas in case of DMS table space, you have to manually specify the size and DB2 will use only the size which you specify there basically. Okay. So these are the most typical differences between both SMS and the DMS kind of table spaces basically. Okay. So people normally ask you why when should I create SMS table space and when should I create uh, DMS table spaces basically. So remember the thumb rule is if you know the table how much it is growing going to grow in future then it's always uh, if you know the growth rate when I say growth rate if you know that okay your table will grow 2 GB per month and uh, so you know like how much it will go per quarter which is 6 GB, you know how much it grows per half yearly, which is 12 GB, if you know how much it grows per year, 24 GB, it's always good to create the tablespace with uh, a DMS, database management basically. Okay. 
So there might be some tables which you don't know how much data is going to come. Sometimes the data might be very huge. Sometimes it comes in 10 records. Sometimes it comes in 10 billions or something kind of thing. Okay. So if you don't know how much data is supposed to come and you want to give the maximum size which is present, so the DMS is the best thing basically. Okay. So if you are unsure about the table growth or if you are unsure about the table space, how much data is going to load or come in future, better to create SMS which will use all the free space which is present to the drive. If you know the growth rate, if you are certain about the growth rate, then always good to create the DMS table space basically. Okay. Clear? Any questions? Basically, till this point, what is SMS and what is DMS? Okay. And having said all these things, basically, I'll send you a PDF which will uh, uh, tell you the differences. It will mention clearly what are the differences between SMS and DMS table space. But try to understand the logic, basically. Okay. Technically, what people say, DMS is always good in performance. So if you want to have good performance, people go with the DMS. Okay. SMS is good with less maintenance. So it's a trade-off between both the things. If you want performance, go with DMS. If you want less maintenance, go with SMS basically. Okay. So make a note of it basically. Do we need to do a restart all the time? No, you need not do restart. The alter table space is an online operation. So if you increase the space, they will uh, take the new space automatically. You need not do any restart basically. See, emp.out is a file where your data is stored basically. You can give any name there basically. Okay. So it's a place where DB2 is going to uh, write the data basically. It need not be emp.out. You can give any name basically. In companies, they follow some conventions. Like if you are storing the employee data, they will put something like emp.db2 or emp.out kind of thing basically. Okay. So try to uh, uh, give the file location, the file name can be anything, the file extension can be anything, but give the name something which are meaningful to your business basically. Okay. So you can give any name there basically, you may not give dot out only basically, you can put any extensions there basically. Okay. Okay. So we'll move ahead basically. Okay. So we have seen like water table spaces and remember there are few important things. Okay. So till now we have seen that a table is present on a table space and table space points to some physical location. Okay. Remember there are few things. Okay. A single table space can have multiple tables. I think this we discussed also previously. Okay. So if you have a table space, don't always assume that I can put only one table on a table space. You can put any num n number of tables on a table space basically. Okay. So in short, your table space can have multiple tables basically. Okay. So you can create n number of tables in a single table space basically. So DB2 will automatically maintain the data and DB2 will automatically know where to put the data for each and every table basically. Okay. So, so simple thing if you want to see, I can uh, show you here. Okay. Let's go into the next page. So I'll stop this.
So let's say you have created a table space. Let's say this name of the table space is uh, somewhere like TSS1. Okay, so this is the table space. And you, if you are trying to create a table by name employee, you can put employee table on this TSS1. You can put another table by name staff. Any any table name, I'm just giving an example. So writing is not good. Okay. Staff on this table space. You can put another table by name department on this table space. So what I'm trying to tell you here is your table space can have multiple tables basically. Your table space can have multiple tables basically. Okay. So this is allowed not only in DB2, in most of the RDMS, or actually DB2 sequence or any RDMS which you learn, your table space can always have multiple tables basically. Okay. So let's see a simple example how to create it basically. It's a simple example which you might have already done basically. Okay. So what is the table space which we have recently created? TS multiple, right? Okay. So create table TS. I'm creating some dummy tables. So you can see I'm creating a table one with only one column. I'm creating in TS mul table space. Okay. So you're creating another table. Create another table. So you can see the three tables I'm creating in table space TSMUL basically. Okay. So multiple tables can reside on a single table space basically. Clear? Okay, we'll start with the next thing, then we can stop it. Okay. So the next thing is in in DB2, there are some default table spaces which will be created. I'll tell you what are default table spaces. So I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm trying to create a database. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that for every table which you create, you should definitely go to a table space. Let's say I'm trying to create a table. I'm not specifying the table space name. Okay. I'll show you an example. Let's say I'm running some simple example here. So I'm not specifying the table space name here. I'm just trying to create a table. Okay, I think the table name is already there. So let me change the table name. Okay, you can see here in this example, I have created a table. I have not specified any table space name. If you don't specify any table space name, so still DB2 puts it into a table into a table space, which we call it as default table space. So, but the question is, what is default table space? When the default table spaces will be created? Okay. So remember. When you create a database, there are some default table spaces which are automatically created. For every database which you create, there are default table spaces which are created, and they are created automatically, basically. Okay. So remember, in DB2, there are three different tables of table spaces which are created. Okay. Okay. Just a second. So what are the names of three different table spaces? The names of three different table spaces is cant space, camp space one, and user space one. So these are the three default table spaces which are automatically created when you create a database. So I'll do one thing. I'll simply run a data create db command. We remove the connection. Create db some test db. So you can see here, I'm trying to just create a database. So once this table spaces are automatically created, okay? So if you look at it, you will see that three table spaces are created basically. One is cat space. We'll see what is cat space. The second table space is temp space. The third is user space one. So just make a note of these things, okay? Just make a note of these three. Uh, we can uh, see in detail tomorrow. But for now, just make a notes of the things.
clear? Okay, so let's see. Okay, the database is still getting created. Okay. So once the so the plan is once this database is created, I'll connect to the database and I'll simply do list table spaces. If you do that, you'll see three different types of table spaces will be created, which is syscat space, second is temp space, and third is user space. Okay. Okay, I think the database got created, but I'll show you. Okay. So what is the use of syscat space? We'll see tomorrow in detail, but at high level, remember syscat space is meant for, I think for the people who are from mainframes and other technologies they know what is system tables system tables are the tables where your metadata information or data dictionary information is stored basically okay so those tables will be stored in syscat space basically so the second type of table space is called uh, uh, temp space one where temporary operations are performed like joins if you run a query which is running two tables the temporary result set is stored in temp space or if you are creating an index uh, the sorting has to be done. The sorting will be done in term space one basically. So any temporary operations which you are doing will be done in term space one basically. The third is user space one where uh, if you don't specify the table space names while creating the tables it goes to user space one basically. Okay. So to create a database why it is taking much time? See it depends upon the resources. My Linux is having only 1.5 GB of RAM basically. Okay. So always the speed depends upon your resources basically okay so if you give 4 GB to the Linux server it will be created within second basically okay so companies will be having a uh, few uh, high resources so things will be fast there basically so I'm trying to connect to the database I am trying to see list table spaces you can see three different types of table spaces are created as I told you one is syscan space which we have seen second is temp space one third is user space one okay so we'll see in detail like what are the use of each and every table space uh, we'll see like what is syscat space what are tables will be stored in there and what are temp space and what uh, temporary operations are performed basically okay so we'll stop it for today okay so any questions till this point basically before we stop it okay so we'll start tomorrow with uh, describing like what are these table spaces and what data DB2 stores in these table spaces kind of thing basically okay so still if you have any questions after this class you can uh, reach me or you know my email ID okay I'll be sending you further material it's a very good uh, documentation material so start reading the material I'll just forward you maybe within hours from now basically okay so we'll stop it for today we'll meet again uh, tomorrow at the same time then basically yeah thanks bye Thank you.